everything about the South Carolina Festival, and we are getting ready to explore the final race of this opening round of the Grid Life Rush SR Series, all part of Grid Life South Carolina Festival here. Getting ready to get after it here on this uh, very, very challenging, fun track. Uh, and uh, you got 14 turns and uh, about 2.3 miles, really. And uh, our coverage is brought to you by NOS Energy Drink, a fabulous partner of everything Grid Life and just energizing everybody as well. And Falcon Tire, also a big part of our presentation here as we are ready to go. These cars are out, coming around. I'm just going to launch right in. Uh, the starting lineup should be the number 56, Orion Leach, who has had a really strong weekend so far. Uh, getting that win over the Stig, who will start second. Then uh, John Ryman, the third, very impressive in that uh, sec first race of the day in the number 28, Suelio Almeida, after two fifths yesterday, getting the big fourth in the number 10. Uh, Jason Ayler in the number 74 will start fifth. And uh, then Nick Billingsley in the number nine will start sixth. In seventh will be the 11 of Samuel Reed. In eighth, the 12 of Brett Di uh, DiGiacomo. Then in the ninth spot, the 58 of Bill Wright. Then in the 10th spot, the 98 of Logan Hadel. In the 11th spot, the 19 of Kelsey Billingsley. That's the uh, the brother and sister team. In the 12th spot, the 63 of uh, Vila Saldana. In the 13th spot, the 15 of Bruno Perpura. Starting in the 14th spot, the 44 of Craig Andrews. 15th spot, the 3 of Timothy Fokin. 16th spot, the 26 of Robbie Sanders. 17th. The 62 of Tom Burns, 18th to 13, uh, that JC Racing entry once again. 19th spot, the 65 of John Howe. 20th, the number five of Rod Rabman, who hopefully will be able to keep it all together and charge through the field. He has been so quick. And then at 21st, the uh, 38 of Timothy Ziegenfuss. So we're going to see how that all plays out. And if Radman, if, if the car stays together, uh, he should be fun to watch coming through this field. Yeah, he should be a pretty hard charger with the pace he's had the entire weekend. Yeah. And it's a shame he had the issue in race three, but you know, it'll be fun to watch him come through. Yeah, he was flying in race three before it happened. So, And he's easy to pick out with Absolutely. that chrome blue car. Beautiful so livery. We'll keep an eye out. Now the question is, yeah, he's there. I was wondering if maybe um, whatever happened was was terminal, but he's out there. So here we go. Final race of this opening weekend for the Grid Life Rush SR Championship. And these remarkable prototypes coming to the line. GT3 Cup performance for a fraction of the price, especially with the arrow and downforce on these cars. Here we go, waiting for that flag to fly. We're green! Nice start by Beach there, going and getting an early lead. Yeah, he jumped on it, timed it to perfection. Now shuts the door on the Stig. Oh, yeah. someone uh, someone had an issue on turn one yeah. on the inside. Let's see if they were able to continue. Meanwhile, there's Radman. Radman already back. making up positions. Yeah, he's wasting no time at all. A couple of guys in front of him making the uh, run as well. Top five right now, I think, pretty much in qualifying order. And uh, you take a look in that sixth spot. I think that is the blue car Billingsley looking really strong here as well at this stage. And Suelio Almeida sitting there in that fourth spot. That's that gray and red car, fourth in your screen right now, trying to figure out what he can do with John Ryman the third. That little bit of a break already up front between those first two, though, Chris. Yeah, they've been the class of the field the entire oh, weekend. Yeah. Leach and the stick have just been at it. And he's looking at him on the outside here. Bit of a lockup, though, by yeah. the stick. Rare mistake. Yeah, he may have actually just tapped the back of Leach there. Not hard enough to, to move him or anything, but... Yeah, he got in really hot there. And again, that's a pretty good toe with these cars. You're going to get a draft, and suddenly you're approaching that corner just that bit faster than you ever have. Yeah, and then also right behind him, you have to thank your aero loads reduced so you don't have as much braking grip as you think. Another big lockup into a... wonder if he's got a some sort of brake bias problem because he just locked up huge into 14. Yeah, very rare mistakes we're seeing from him, but, you know. Or it also could be the grip in the track's going away as, you know, the sun is still pounding down. Almeida is right on Ryman, though. Yeah. Looking to the inside oh. here in one. Ryman didn't have a great run through two, but in three, but now, let's see. I don't think Almeida's close enough to try and make that surprise move into four at this point. 
Billingsley up into the fifth spot. Yeah, best run from Billingsley so far we've seen all day. Yeah, Great really job solid. getting up to P5. And Di Giacomo solidly up into that sixth spot, too, uh, after starting an eight. So a couple of nice early moves being made here. And it was Sam Reed in the number 11. Yeah, and look at Radman already bit. up in P10. Holy cow, what a run he has put on here. Just putting on a clinic coming yeah, through the field. Yeah. Only eight seconds back from the leaders after passing all those cars. Fantastic yeah, that's, job that's to recover. remarkable. That chrome blue car on the prowl here. There he is. No, oh, wait. There he is. No, he's the first one. He is the first one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the sun glints, not, not quite the same. But, yeah, he is absolutely augering his way up through the pack here. He's getting after it, so I'll be interested to see how far he can move up. You know, he's been running in the top five most of the weekend. So. Certainly has that pace. And, uh, you know, he's one of those guys, clearly, uh, he's got some skills. And uh, we'll see what he's going to be able to do with it. He's got a little bit of a gap now up to that next group that he's going to have to deal with. You know, a couple of, uh, it's only a couple of tenths to read. But, uh, you know, the longer it takes him to get through, the, the tougher it will be to get up to potential podium stuff. And this battle remains fierce here. Yeah, Ryman's defending the best he can, but Almeida's not giving up. And Almeida looks to be able to stick with Ryman without the car moving around anywhere near as much as Ryman's is. Yeah, that's a lot of experience on Almeida's fault. Uh, not, yeah. Almeida's uh, pace to be able to follow that close and not make mistakes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, and his car just simply may be set up a little bit better right now. We'll have to see what happens. But look at the front here, Leach now opening up a bit of a margin over the Stig. Yeah, had fast to slap that time by and just keep pulling away. That's that's what he wants to do. And, uh, you know, we've been seeing these these braking issues. Now, we'll see if the stick can make the adjustment here. As, you know, yep, if you can't solve it with a bias change, then you just have to back your braking point up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. No one wants to do it, but, you know, you have to do what you have to do to finish the race. Yep. You know, if P2 is it, then so be it. Yeah, yeah take what you can get. And that's part of, of uh, you know, the learning curve for, you know, newer drivers here, the stick not being one of them, but just making the point. There are days where you've got a fifth place car. Yep. It's just that. The stick's closing in on Leach, yeah, though. he oh, sure is. Leach, Leach must have an mistake, issue. Or did he oh, break? Leach oh. has an issue. No. Unbelievable. Oh, and he's coasting out of 14. Something happened. He but didn't I, pit? I wonder. Interesting. Yeah. It seems like he's got back up the pace, but... Wow, I wonder what that uh, could have been. Yeah, that's a very odd, rare mistake from Leach, but I don't think it didn't seem like a mistake. No, and so suddenly it's the Stig leading, but Wyman is in second. Remember, the Stig uh, normally will pull into the pits as the white flag starts, so Ryman and Almeida right now, they're they're battling essentially for the potential win here. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be huge for either of them, oh, as you know. Oh, man, both of them. Yeah, that's that's really heartbreaking for Leach as he's been running up front the entire weekend, finishing first or second in every single race and time session for that matter. And I wonder what would have happened where he would have decided not to pit and felt it come back. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is like maybe the car died and he popped the clutch, got it rolling again, or something. Maybe yeah. he bumped the kill switch, you know, something, well, something as simple as those that. Those things can happen, that's for sure. Yes, right. and I, yeah. he, he's got a hard fight now to try and get back up front. He's sitting P4, but he's looking at Almeida now. Well, I'll tell you, Ryman, after Almeida was all over the back of uh, Ryman here, Ryman has been able to gap him a little bit, opened up about a second lead. Yeah, great drive by Ryman so far. And there's the uh, number 12 at DG Giacomo, that beautiful gray and teal machine. Yeah, Hadel's pressuring him, though. Yeah, he is. And look at Radman up to eighth. He's just continuing to march through this field. Radman's Whoa. actually up ahead now. I think Radman's now in P6 Holy on cow, the track. Yeah. What a drive. Yeah, and a nice move there by Hadel to get her on D. Giacomo. But now D. Giacomo oh. wanted to make the pass, but there's a yellow waving. Waving yellow there. in turn 14. Oh, and that's the 26. Oh, That's uh, Sanders. Yep. Problem so, uh, Robbie him. Sanders. What a shame. That's unfortunate. Look at Radman, though, up to P6. Yeah, Leach is closing back run. in, though. Yeah, he is. 
Ryman stretched out a nice gap to Almeida there. 1.7 seconds. I wonder if Almeida just pushed too hard and used his tires up just a little bit. Yeah, well, he's also got to focus on defending from Leach because Leach is on him. Yeah, that's a really good point. We know how fast Leach is. And uh, just got to feel gutted a little bit for Leach. But on the other hand, uh, you know, for Ryan and Almeida, this is a, a golden opportunity. Absolutely. And like we were podium. talking but about. Look at Leach close. Sorry, I thought he might try something down at eight. And I think Almeida did too. He left him a little bit of room. Yep. And, uh, you know, he didn't need to, and that slowed his, en his exit. So let's see. Maybe Leach will do something here down into 11. He's close. Oh, He's taking a look. Oh, look oh it makes the move. Wow. wow. And I think Almeida went, yeah, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> side That's a, by side through 10. Harry place to be side by side there, especially was, with how fast these cars are. I was going to say, yeah. So, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, you know, like we've been talking about the entire weekend at CMP, you have to follow close and be opportunistic. If someone yes. has an issue, makes a mistake or whatever, you have to be there ready to pounce. It's not, you know, a particularly easy track to overtake, you know, in period, so. You have to be ready to take on those uh, mistakes. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are, are places on the track that would look like a great overtaking area, but one, the track's a little narrow, and, you know, you think into 11 would be good, but it's, a, you know, it takes a long time to get to the apex. It's not like, you know, 14 would be, and one, to me, are the really good places here, uh, but you got to get out of those corners so well. Absolutely, and especially yeah. those are real short straights compared yeah. to the previous corner. It's all about corner exit out of the last corner. Exactly. Oh, oh wow. Move there. I think that's a lap car there in four. Okay. So. Here comes Leach trying to hunt down Ryman. Yep, he got through, obviously, on Almeida. And that's DG Como. No, that's Billingsley, I think, is there as well. Yeah, he's lost a lot of ground, though, Billingsley has. Yeah. And so Radman is uh, right there. So we could have a, a pass for the top five here in very short order. Yeah. There's Look the at Leach, though, the back on Ryman. Yeah, he's there. There's Almeida. And look at Radman's in the back of those two guys. That's Billingsley and the lap car. Yeah, Ryman's really just got to concentrate, keep his head down, and pump laps in. He's got to create more of a gap. You know, for, forget about the stig. He's got to just focus on Leach and exactly. create a gap. Yep, get after it here. Yeah, Radman's closing in on Billingsley here. He really Almost is. up back up to the top five yeah. from P20. Oh, this is just a superb run. Just letting it have its head here, letting the arrow do its work through 12. 13 and now here we go into 14 not close enough to do it there we have oh, a full, full course, course caution wow radman what gets a, an amazing opportunity here what a reset and actually it looks like the uh stick pitted in that lap so. so all right so we're it's game on here and here comes yeah. the pace car and that ryman and leach and almeida if they if they tortured their tires too much they're going to get a little breather here, but Radman showing amazing pace, and now that big deficit will evaporate as well. Yeah, absolutely. So this is honestly the best case scenario for Radman. Full reset, you know, you know, he's back in the main pack. So it's essentially like restarting the race from P5. So just got to forget and reset. Yep. And it'll be interesting. And hey, folks, don't forget this isn't the last part of our Grid Life Primetime show here. We also have the final race of the weekend for GLTC, the Grid Life Touring Cup. And uh, the first two races on the weekend were absolutely spectacular. Third one, you know, had that uh, that long incident and uh, ended it early. But uh, if we get anything like those first two races, we're going to end this with a spectacular show for you. And I think with this now, obviously a lot of things that happened up front, but all of that's going away, and it's showtime. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really looking forward to this restart. <laughs> Me too. And I mean, Ryman has the guy, the only other guy other than the Stig, uh, to get a pull or a win here on his six on this restart. Yeah, and Leach was even still dropping seconds a lap on Ryman, so yeah. I, I would expect a move here in a very short course from Leach. And I got to ask you, you know, when you're in this other uh, scenario, when you, the guy behind you, uh, you know, you just haven't been able to match his pace all weekend. How hard do you fight him? 
you know, we're talking about a race win here. You know, race yep, win for yep. Ryman would be huge. I don't, oh, even think, I, don't, I don't even think Ryman has a podium this weekend, does he? I don't believe so. I was no. about to say, I mean, so it's, it's a huge opportunity for Ryman. I was, it, okay, I was about to say, do we have a car pulling over? But it does not. But, yeah, I mean, it's a massive opportunity for Ryman here. So, I mean, I think you fight him like you would anyone else. You know, you run your race. You know, you don't throw ca countless blocks, you know. Yeah, yeah, but you, yeah. you run your race. You defend your line and do what you can. Now, this is intriguing to me. Did they just do a wave around? <sighs> I don't know. It's almost like the pace car picked up the wrong car. But that's what I'm, I'm almost wondering here because that... That's the number nine of Billingsley. Yeah, that's P4 there. Yeah. And then Radman. So I think... I think that's what's going on here. Because I thought I saw everybody go by the pace car. So I think they're doing essentially a wave around to try and get the field back in the correct order after the pace car picked him up. They're hustling a little bit here. Yeah, so I saw Radman looking a little to the side, like, you know, trying to get ready to go. Because under full course yellow, you can run whatever pace you want as, until you catch up to the pace car. Exactly. Within a reasonable and safe amount. Yeah. What we haven't seen is what the full course yellow is for yet. Yeah, I believe it may have been for one of those stalled cars. Because yeah. There were several slow cars and ones that had issues. So. I've not seen one parked, though. Well, one to 58 of Bill Wright. I mean, he started in the ninth spot, and he's showing way at the back right now. So I wonder if it may potentially have been a problem. Yeah, I'm not sure. It shows the uh, scores of Rush Stig, I think, in P18, but I believe he came into the pits. I think so, too. So right now, that looks like an old... It's a 240. It's a 240 okay. yeah. or SX. It's a SX. S13. Yeah. So that's one of the cool things about grid life is, is literally they do a sort of contest drawing uh, for a pace car. And they go, if you've got a really cool car, we're coming to, you know, Carolina Motorsports Park. If you've got a really cool car you think might be a good pace car, you know, send us some pictures. Give us a little background. If we like it, you're our pace car. And you get free entry to the weekend, too. Exactly. So it's an awesome, awesome deal that grid life does yeah. with the pace car. So really fun to see it. So, all right, here we go. Got the wrecker out here going to, uh, and just because it's a wrecker doesn't necessarily mean it's a car that needs a wrecker. Uh, but sometimes it's easier to just get the wrecker out and flat tow a car in. So. Yeah, and here we go. They picked up the correct car this time, so we have the top three all queued up here, waiting for the other pack to join. And this is one of those scenarios where um, everybody that is chasing and trying to catch the field, if you were to go green fairly soon, your tires could be a lot warmer than the Absolutely. guys up front. Yeah, and <laughs> that's an advantage. It. Exactly, it is. You know, especially looking at Billingsley, Radman. You know, they could have made a move on on Almeida right on the start. So. You bet. Yeah, look at seventeen. How just ran his uh, best lap so far of the day. He just improved. <laughs> you gotta love it. There we go. Everybody's there. Very nice. So that works. And I actually had. I got. You know, that happened to me. I missed. Uh, you know, due to a little problem, I missed the pre-grid in a race I was doing. And so I had quite, you know, it was like a 35 car field and I was like 22nd, third class, something like that. And I was late out. And I mean, so the grid was gone. And this was at Brainerd on the old three mile long course there. And I took off and, you know, to catch the field and it suddenly dawned on me, don't catch them too quick. And so I actually eased off a little bit. And then, like, the last five corners, I just hammered it. Came out of turn 10 and had a head of steam built up. And it was like I went right as I thought this isn't going to work. They're not, you know, I'm going to have to lift. They threw the green. And not only did I have much warmer tires, I just had a head of steam built up, cut to the inside. And by the time um, I came out of turn three at Brainerd, I was right where I qualified. And it was just because I had that head of steam. And I had the tires were really hot. Yeah, it's all you got to play smart games at times. Yeah. You know? Yep. So, oh, I thought, you know, you see those yellows go down. Sometimes I'm watching for the lights on the pace car. Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't see the lights on the pace car, so hopefully we're going back to green this time. Yeah, we never saw the issue that the uh, double yellow is for, but no. hopefully we go back green. Well, while we have this moment, I want to remind everybody, if you happen to be up in, uh, there's a beautiful little coastal town on the uh, west coast at, in Michigan called South Haven, and Gingerman Raceway is just a few miles away from it. And there's, there's the problem coming. And if you're up in that area here, June 7th, 8th, and 9th, and believe me, that time of year up in uh, the west coast of Michigan, it is stunning up there. Pure Michigan is what they call it. And uh, come on up. Gingerman is a cool little track. Uh, the, uh, the Midwest Festival, which is what that event is called for, was the original festival for grid life. It's their home track. It's where it all began. And I'm telling you, it is a blast. Fun track, and the uh, the little town. There's some great towns along that western coast of Michigan, South Haven, uh, the closest. But that whole area is fabulous. Come out and join us because it's it's just going to be a blast. Let's see who that. Track. That's the 38 of. Oh, Timothy Ziegenfuss. So they're just looking right now, I think, for a place to be able to tuck them. And so he's behind the barriers now. And, yep, uh, he's coming down pit lane. Yeah. So we should be able to get going here this next time by. And they've shown no, no, no qualms about, you know, when the time runs out, you know, if they've had a long caution, let them run a couple more. So let's see what we're going to be able to do here. I know the GLTC cars are waiting, but they're in no rush. They can come out, and, you know, they can do their race. So let's see here. I don't see the yellows in the starter stand, and the pace car's in. So we are going green. We're green. The restart is happening, and look at that launch by Leach. Yeah, immediate move to the inside there by Leach, and gets the job done right oh. off the bat in one. Oh, a little bit of dirt there by Ryman. Yeah, well, he squeezed Ryman pretty good on the exit there. Yeah, Almeida's looking behind, trying to, you know, take pounce on the opportunity. So is Radman on Billingsley. Oh, and making Radman a move. takes a look into four. He's got position here, and he's through. So Radman continuing his march up through the back, right on the back of Almeida. Oh. A little wiggle there. And who's that that ran wide? That was right behind. Is that uh, Reed possibly, or maybe Ayler? But Radman, what a march he has put on here. It's nice to see him with, you know, he's had some issues, but oh, wiggle there. Radman is absolutely on it. Yeah, you saw him wiggle in the carousel too coming through. Yeah. I mean, he, he is on the limit. He's got his boot in it. There's no question here. And look at that lead that Leach has already opened up. Yeah, they really needed to somehow, uh, Ryman needed to really bottle each up a little bit because, uh, you know, he's got pace. Yep. And he's gone here. And now Radman is looking to spoil the day here after getting around on Billingsley. He's trying to spoil the day for Almeida uh, and potentially Ryman in terms of a podium here. Yeah, Leach timed that restart perfectly. Oh, he did. Absolutely stellar. And he's shown that, you know, not just the speed, he's shown that level of racecraft this week. Absolutely. He's done some great stuff. There's a look at Suelio Almeida sitting right now in a podium spot when they cross the line as the white flag comes out. So that was a green, we're doing a green white checker. And uh, Leach is up by about 1.3 seconds, but the battle between Ryman Almeida and Radman is close. Billingsley's just a little bit further back. So, uh, but I'll tell you, Ryman has responded beautifully here and has opened that margin up a bit now over Radman. I mean, over Almeida, and Radman attacking. Oh, he's making a move. Boy, and I'll tell you, that was a nice move by Almeida. It was a nice defensive move. He he chose the spot of the track that Radman wanted to go, and thus Radman had to get out of it a little bit. That wasn't a block, because he did that move first, and that's really how it comes down. If somebody makes a move and you move in response, that's a block. Yeah, Radman's going to be right on his tail, though, now. Yeah. We've seen him make moves into the king this weekend. He's got the draft. He does. He's there. He's got the pace. Look at oh. that. Going to the outside. Boy, this is sketch. And does it. Makes it stick. Almeida being very gentlemanly there. And then Almeida ultra deep on the brakes into 11. Way wide. But rounds him up. What a move. And did Radman just have an issue? 
Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Radman was nope. definitely early on the brakes, though, for turn 11 compared to Almeida. Yeah, he's there. I thought, oh, man, did he just have a problem. But what an outside roundup by Almeida. Yeah, what, what a battle for P3 there. Fantastic job incredible. by both competitors. Yeah, this is great stuff. Here we go. On to the front straight. Leach comfortably out in front. But what look at Leach celebrating as he comes to the line. Ryman will get second, and Almeida, what a day, and right at the line. Who makes that move? Billings Billingsley Lee. hangs on over Hano for that final spot in the top five. 14 thousandths of a second for <laughs> P5. What a finish. How close do you like it? That was incredible, folks. And uh, for Ryman, so great to see that. And for Suelio, who's at two fifths and a fourth gets a podium here in uh, again this is the opening weekend of the grid life rush sr series let's take a look at uh, some of the highlights we had here and there's look at that move by radman right off he the was, bat yeah he was not wasting time was he all right look at him going off-roading on the inside <laughs> of turn one as well so here was some of this great dueling as well here and uh leach jumping to the front early yeah and just that, that moment we don't know what happened there what, what a recovery drive by leach though that oh. that full course caution definitely helped him out but you know what a recovery drive yeah i mean you know and he you know when he got it started or whatever happened again he was just flying one more time and then this sweet battle here and here was the restart after the caution and you could see once again leach just timed it perfectly on ryman yep he made the move and but he was gone that little squeeze that's pure veteran racecraft there. Yep, absolutely. And the one thing that I'm curious about is if you're if you're sanctioned by Gridlife, the overlap rule with Gridlife comes into play. And if a guy's got any overlap on you, you need to give him uh, that piece of track. Uh, now, for these drivers, a number of them, this is the first time they've run it. But this move impressed me, that outside run by Suelio, just right around the outside of, uh, of Radman. That was spectacular. And that close run to the line with Billingsley grabbing it. So that wraps up the opening round of the Grid Life Rush SR Championship Series. Uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as we did calling it. And we've got one more race to go. 